Hello, everybody. Welcome to the uh, Zoomer Tombstone podcast. I'm Synth. Uh, we have Ivan and Mads as usual, and we also have a very special uh, crossover episode here today. Our crossover is with uh, Remember Shuffle, um, a podcast dedicated to a lot of 2000s uh, culture and media and politics. Uh, ben and Jordano, you guys want to give us a little heads up about your podcast? Yeah, I'll go. I'll I'll go first. Uh, my name is Ben. This is my voice. Many people have complained that they can't tell Jordano <laughs> and I apart, so I'm gonna lead with that. But uh, yeah, we our our podcast is a shameless attempt to cash in on the 20 year nostalgia cycle, and so we look <laughs> back at stuff uh, that society has forgotten or buried or memory hold or whatever you want to do, whatever whatever metaphor you want. So things like Spike TV. Uh, that we would all rather forget as society. And then we also look at some of the more mainstream stuff. So we've done movie reviews on Batman, be, uh, the Christopher Nolan Batmans, The Matrix, uh, Lord of the Rings. So we try and get everything, a real comprehensive look at the pop culture from 20 years ago. Uh, yeah, so this is Giordano. I, I think I have a cooler voice than Ben, personally. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we, we'll typically try and take something from the 2000s, a book, TV show, an actual event, and uh, say two things about it. First, which is like, why did our culture uh, like this? Like, what what drew the, the cultural um, milieu to like a piece of art like this? And then also, like, how did this art actually affect our culture and, like, have some kind of echo on the way that we operated afterwards? Yeah, so I was uh, listening to, like, your uh, Generation... Uh, was it Generation Killed, it was called? The miniseries yeah, episode? Yeah. Ooh, yeah, I, I love that series. I had a lot of fun uh, listening to that one. And I haven't even actually seen the show, but I still just enjoy just kind of listening to it as I'm, like, driving and working out. That was most people's response to that episode. <laughs> that was, almost no everyone one said, I haven't seen this show. Yeah, it was it was too sad. It was, yeah, a, a realistic look at the Iraq war, which was a bad thing done badly. Uh, <laughs> Came out like like literally like three or four years after it was actually happening. Yeah. My mom yeah. my mom tells me like every like week that she doesn't like the podcast. She's like, I don't like your podcast. I wish you would talk about the housewives more often. <laughs> and uh but re after Generation Kill came out, she's like, That was such a good episode. I loved you guys talking about Generation Kill. And I'm like <laughs> Sometimes you just you don't know what to expect with the way an, uh, an episode gets received. The mom mm -hmm. seal of approval. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will have to ask you guys this. Have you guys ever covered anything from the 2000s that happened before 9-11? Like anything in the year 2000? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Boondock mm. Saints, for one. Uh, the Matrix. Um, those came out only a couple months apart. And the first uh, the first Strokes album, right? Oh, the first okay. Strokes album, yeah. That's right. And uh, we did talk about Tomb Raider, which was pre-9-11 <laughs> as well. God damn. Tomb Raider. That's a blast from the past. <laughs> Angelina Jolie's fake tits. <laughs> yeah, she had the look. We, she had the look for everything else except the tits. <laughs> mm -hmm. whoa, whoa, whoa. We talk about that on the episode. How like you know how they like redid Sonic to make his eyes bigger to like acquiesce <laughs> to the fans. Yeah. Like the fans complained that Angelina Jolie like wasn't like I did like that her tits weren't big enough. And the studio was like, "We hear you. We see you. You're beautiful. We promise." We'll do whatever it takes to make her chest bigger. Oh, <laughs> like just completely validating this absurd complaint. Meanwhile, she doesn't <laughs> even raid a fucking tomb for forty-five minutes <laughs> into the movie. It's... If half of those nerds were in a, in the same room with Angelina Jolie, they would literally like melt to the ground. Like I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. They wouldn't even know how to talk. They'd just be like, uh, 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 "Duties." Uh -huh. <laughs> that happened to me. I met Katy Perry once, and I forgot how to speak. Actually, <laughs> I, really, I, I I used to be a, like a, a customs officer in Canada, and um, she came through my line at the airport. Boo! And... All borders are violence. <laughs> <laughs> I was eighteen. And um, yeah, I, let's be yeah. clear. You were like the the student customs officer, yeah. right? And the like the Hitler Youth, but for customs officers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Sure. <laughs> and um, anyway, she comes through my line, and I all I have to say to her is like anything to declare, you know. And I just I couldn't even get it out. I was like, because <laughs> it was just it was too much for for like an eighteen year old to take in. I was like, good God. 
I've never seen such beauty in my life. It's like staring into the Ark of the Covenant. You know? Did you see her with uh, Russell Brand? Did you put any ideas in his head? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I told him to, to be careful, uh, to yeah, watch out. Because, uh, you know. <laughs> when you were 18, that was like the height of her fame. Oh, yeah. This was like, I guess, uh, 2008. Would you say that California girls are undeniable? <laughs> you sure <laughs> yeah especially socal not norcal but certainly socal you know daisy dukes and bikinis on top uh, there was a version of that we had in colorado like uh parka sweaters on top it was like a colorado girls version of that one what the fuck what <laughs> i don't is, think colorado okay, this, is this is something true and on set on their most recent episode no one should do parody songs Right? There's one guy that society is allowed to do parody songs, and it's Weird Al Yankovic, and no one else. It, it should be a uh, What, what be about Bart Baker? Whoa, Are you disrespecting whoa, whoa. Bart Breaker on the Zoomer Tombstone podcast? <laughs> Didn't he uh, end up like in China or something, that guy? He, yeah, and he's like making parodies in Chinese or something like that. Oh. <laughs> he goes from making fun of like 13 year old girls like Rebecca Black and now is in China. That's... Now he's like cutting propaganda for the state. It's like, ooh, I'm. <laughs> it's not like Gangnam style, it's uh, football style. I don't know. I will have to say with that weird owl, um, you know, I, I'm glad he did parody songs instead of like singing about food all the time. I, I never got his food phase. Like, it's like I feel really like every weird. great artist has a food phase. They just talk about food for some reason. What? Can you explain on this? <laughs> I mean, what? They have a food phase. I mean, uh, it's like a like a concept album, except they have no concepts. They're just like, oh, let me raid the fridge right quick. Yeah, let me mm. make a song about zucchinis, bro. Can you name yeah. an artist that did that? <laughs> MF Doom. Didn't Kanye West like make like verses about like sandwiches being stolen from the fridge or something like that? Yeah, so he made so. a Chick Fil A song. But yeah, well, food, food album. <laughs> 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 we should probably jump into the actual topic of the episode. Yeah, so uh, we all watched. We all sat down and uh, together we grabbed our popcorn and we uh, had a gun by our side. And we watched an uh, epic movie from 2007. <laughs> a little dramatic, don't you think? I don't I, think so. I counted down every minute of watching this movie. I was on like the Amazon player, moving my cursor every so often, and be like, how much more? How much Wait, more? You, you paid for this? I watched it on Plex for free. Yeah, I, watched it on Plex. Yeah, I watched it on Plex, too. I was sitting here watching it with, with my friend uh, Lem, uh, my friend Tucker, and uh, the entire time after the like halfway mark in the movie, we just kept screaming at the screen, "End the movie!" Well, no, that, that's why you couldn't enjoy the movie. You were screaming the whole time, like you know, maybe yeah, if you just paid attention to it without screaming, you might have laughed a bit. Yeah, because that movie is fucking garbage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, this is a great movie for us to discuss because I feel like this was only appreciated by people like your age. Like my little cousins would always tell me that this was their favorite movie, as well as The Love Guru, and <laughs> that I like have to watch. I can't it. defend that. One. <laughs> you got to show your little cousins Master of Disguise. It was perfectly made for them, I think. <laughs> I saw that one in theaters, and I think, oh my god, yeah, I, even as uh, like a. 13 year old or something i was like mm, uh, this is i think a bad movie which i've never seen before <laughs> you truly are a real member of the turtle club then <laughs> <laughs> yeah the skull and bones society and <laughs> the illuminati the turtle club <laughs> yeah, they're all up there except the turtle club is on top they're turtling yeah. Mm -hmm. Synth, you said you liked this movie. Like you were, you're a fan. You're a, a, a writer, a writer for it. Don't you, say you like. Epic head? I, <laughs> I, okay. Look, it's it, it's one of those things where uh, you look at like old, those old like '80s comedies, like Airplane or Blazing Saddles. There's like a five minute better fart movies. Scene. There, there's a five minute fart scene in that movie, and okay. I, I look at these and I'm like, they're they're not great. They're not good, but they're ma they were made for like a movie theater experience <laughs> in the uh, 2000. <laughs> that boy is just screaming. That was at. the issue. Is I didn't see it in IMAX. That's why none of the jokes were landing. <laughs> well, uh, so, uh, uh, have you seen any of the other parody movies from the 2000s uh, that you can compare contrast it to, like a uh, date movie, for example? Yeah, and shit movie and fart movie. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, well, these were uh, the directors were like Aaron Friedberg and like uh, Aaron. I, I probably should have researched the director's the name. Seltzer but and Friedberg, hard seltzer yeah. and fried beans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the, the the pair, those guys, they made uh, date movie, epic movie, d- disaster movie, Meet the Spartans, and Vampire uh, Suck. Yeah, real top tier cinema. Yeah. Well, most importantly, you got to remember because they put it on all their work. They were two of the six writers on the original scary movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Never which that. I read about this. This actually like made me change my politics about the writer strike. Finding this out because <laughs> what had happened was these two guys. Uh, one of them's Canadian, by the way. Sorry for that. Uh, he uh, always they, Canada. <laughs> they wrote uh, Spy Hard, like a movie from 1996 that you may have seen a blockbuster unrented on the shelf. <laughs> and they then like were working on like a horror movie uh, parody and they sold it to a studio who was also making like the Wayans Brothers scary movie. And then when the studio decided to go with the Wayans Brothers scary movie, the WGA, the Writers Guild, forced the studio to add them on as writers like give them credit as writers even though they made no contributions to the script and so now uh all writers are scabs and i support the studios (laughs) (laughs) and and, i do not think that writers should be unionized okay guys this turned me this turned me into a corporate uh a corporate uh pro-corporate guy Yes. No more unions. Into an anarcho-capitalist. No rights for any <laughs> workers. Just, just modern-day feudalism for every writer. And if they have a problem with it, we'll replace them with AI. Welcome to the uh, Bob Iger fan cast. Uh, where we all play <laughs> Bob Iger we love. Or children. You know, it doesn't need to be the robots. It could also be the children. I don't know if you saw Arkansas. Some of these states are uh, liberal finally liberalizing these arcane and puritanical child labor laws. I, I, I wrote, like, similar <laughs> jokes like a epic movie when I was like eight years old and I first started writing. Yes. Yeah. Ben yes. and I in high school made a movie. Uh, don't, called don't, Bar- don't, don't, don't no. say the title of our parody it's, film. The <laughs> movie was called Bar Mitzvah oh, no. Crashers. And the what? It was, it was called Bar Mitzvah Crashers and it was a parody of Wedding Crashers. That yeah. is awesome. Yeah. That's, and that's and amazing. the idea was that there was two guys who loved food and so they would uh, crash Bar Mitzvahs to eat food and like the, it culminates in them crashing the bar mitzvah of the son of the prime minister of Israel, um, <laughs> because it'll have the best food, and uh, like that had a more like coherent, um, like par- like a, a more narrow parody scope than what this movie was trying to do, which was to parody every movie from the last eighteen months. Yeah, we didn't think to ourselves like, what? Yeah, w- what's everything that came out very recently, and how can we work it in? So did you actually like, is this like a YouTube thing or did you like put it in theaters for a little bit? Like what happened with this? It was for a school film festival. Okay. Did it win any awards? It was actually rejected from the (laughs) (laughs) festival. Critics hated it. Critics hated it. So therefore it's good. The critics hated it. The people loved it. Just like the epic movie. (laughs) Yeah. The, uh, the school just ended up not letting the film fest happen because every fucking jag off, like high school jag off in 2006, or seven or eight or whatever year it was produced something that the school was like, yeah, we can't show this to your parents. <laughs> like we can't or, and your colleagues like, no, this is not good. First they rejected Hitler from art school. Then they rejected bar <laughs> with the crashers. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. But you know, this movie, like uh, it, it's just, it was trying to do to like, I think parody movies can be good. You know, like I, mm-hmm. I walk hard came out this same year. So 2007, two parody movies are made walk hard. And this walk hard lost $15 million and this made like $80 million. And I feel like we talk about on our pod all the time about how the two thousands was like the, like truly one of the dumbest times ever. Like I, the only explanation that I have is that bin Laden like flew a plane into our brains because nothing else <laughs> makes sense for the fact that, like this movie made eighty million dollars. The two most played songs were "Yeah" and "Hey Yeah," and <laughs> like just everything about the culture was stupid. And this movie like reinforced that so much for me. I like to think of the two thousands as a as a time where um, the American mentality had just fallen into such like a, a rage induced, you know, kind of sleep uh, like sleepwalking cycle from the nineties, where it's just everything is like. You know, it went from being like, you know, radical, pandering to the teenagers, you know, this, that, whatever, 
to being just like sludge from that point onwards, just pure like economy grade slop, you know, for some mm-hmm. dumb fuck to sit in their lazy boy and watch. Yeah, because mm-hmm. it's, it's it's an economic mini max problem, right? Like I'm sure, like the bean counters didn't make this movie in the same way that they make the the Disney you know right by algorithm franchises but this movie only costs like 20 million dollars to make and they quadrupled their money and i i like the first thing that i i want to see on the wikipedia is like when was it released oh it was released in the dead of winter like end of january so they just needed something to put on the january? schedule yeah yeah not not, not a big uh, movie watching time. Um, i actually remember and- when i was uh when i was a very young child in 2007 i saw ads for this movie constantly on tv all the time like most of their budget must have just dumped straight into advertising because like mm-hmm. that that the little like midget guy uh, i shouldn't say that the small guy the the guy who's next to the the white bitch in the yeah. um in the movie <laughs> the white bitch jennifer cool i only remember him from commercials mm. i would love to see a budget breakdown for this movie and yeah you can clearly see what they were trying to do and I think since this is why you can like squint your eyes and like kind of almost enjoy it because they're trying to do airplane or any one of the Mel Brooks movies like Robin Hood Men in Tights or Spaceballs or any one of these like or or fuck like Austin Powers like any one of yeah. these great oh good parody comedies right yeah um, joke after joke after joke if like the last one didn't stick then this one will but mm. with um these uh. Uh, fried bean and hard seltzer uh, movies. Uh, it's just like joke after joke after joke after joke, and it's just like, uh. Mm-hmm. Can I? I'm, I'm going to make a little defense here. Uh, <laughs> look, it's thermopylae like defense here. <laughs> uh, the Nuremberg trials. Of, uh, <laughs> yeah, Nuremberg that's more and more apt. Um, look, it's humans are are flawed. Beings, we, we sometimes just like to laugh at stupid we're really, things. We're really starting at base principles here. <laughs> ever since, ever since the snake tricked Eve, we have been flawed. <laughs> <laughs> look, look. When, uh, when that one lady fell off the plane and crushed Paris Hilton to death, it's, it's like on an intellectual level, like yes, it's not funny, but just that human, like condition of just laughing at something really stupid i laughed i laughed at that i laughed really hard and i i don't know why so you experienced schadenfreude once and you decided this is a great movie it's not a great movie but i i i I, when i watch a movie i like to like condition myself as like being in a movie theater of that of when it was released so i pictured myself as kind of like this 2007 slacker guy with my bros at the movie theater and we all saw Paris Hilton got crushed and I would have had like a really stupid hyena laugh. Oh, that was funny! <laughs> <laughs> and it's, 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 this movie mistakes a reference for a joke, right? Yeah. It's yes. like, uh-huh. they, yes, it absolutely. reminds me of like, there's a, there's a clip that like, I have never watched the Bing Bong Theory. But there's a clip that I've seen where, like, one of those nerds on the Bing Bong Theory says, like, and now we start the tournament of Westeros, Narnia, Game of Thrones, Star Wars, or some shit. He just chains <laughs> a whole bunch of wor- of nerd words together, and the the laugh track pops off. And it's like, that's not a joke. It's ju- you're just pointing to things. <laughs> it, see, okay, if I may, if I may mm-hmm. for a second. Sorry to cut you off, Sim. But, um... I just I this 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 movie it suffers from family guy itis. <laughs> Every reference is seen as a joke when it's not a joke, it's just hey, this thing happened. Ha <laughs> ha next joke, hey, this thing happened. Ha <laughs> ha Remember uh Jack Sparrow? Remember uh Well now he's in... Jack Swallows. Get oh, yeah. it? Because he's it's kinda funny. gay. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, you saw the movie poster. You saw Superman, Jack Sparrow, Willy Wonka, you know, you you saw the poster. What did you expect? You know, like they gave you the reference movie. You, you, you bought the ticket for the reference movie. You walked in and you saw the reference movie. And you know what? (laughs) 
It's, so one of, <laughs> since your big defense of the film is that they didn't do false advertising. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite part of the film was the one frame of uh, Captain Crunch. That came up for just one second during the pirate yeah. scene. Yeah. If I may attack Synth for a second. Oh, um, <laughs> Go ahead. Beat the shit out okay. of him right now. The argument you're making is that like the taste of children is inherently different from that of adults. And like, therefore, you know, if a child can enjoy this, then like, it's wrong to say that, that they're enjoying it for the wrong reasons. And mm. I just, I disagree with this notion because like, like Austin Powers, I think is a great comparison because that's a movie I loved as like a, a nine year old child. And it is like a lot of like booby P, you know, cartoon violence jokes but it does it well because it's making fun of cliches like it, it, it's it's um parodying a format right and mm -hmm. this movie isn't like i can make fun of a child for liking this and judge them because i think they are capable of understanding a joke at a slightly higher level which is to to mock a structure like a uh, a structure for for a story rather than like being like I'm Borat, and I'm changing one word, and like uh, she is the number yeah. one prostitute in all of Narnia. Oh yeah, like, they that's... plagiarized that whole joke, yeah, and just like <laughs> changed it to Narnia. Yeah, let's be clear. Like the the parody movies that work, they they model and mimic the structure of the things that they're making fun of. No movie works like this. This is, <laughs> right. this, is this is this movie. I think uh, Ivan, you hit the nail on the on the head. This is like if Family Guy were just the cutaways. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's just rapid fire. There's no plot. There's no you know things happen because it, they're trying to get from one joke to the next. It's not happening because they're trying to make a story here. It's happening because they want to show um, what's his face uh, that old guy in like the lion outfit. Uh, talking about Cialis. That's all they care about. Well, there was... I wouldn't say a plot, but I mean, there was like a little bit of, of an of an ob objective. I muttered a bit there, defending this fucking movie. There was an agenda. <laughs> uh, there was an agenda. <laughs> I mean, they, they took down the white bitch. You know, like, <laughs> I'm not saying it's a good plot, but I'm saying, you know, there's... Yeah, a just to bit. summarize the plot. I don't know if you want to summarize the plot as all well, because maybe many people may not have seen this movie. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know I if think, you want to go ahead. I think just us like like tangentially like describing all like the different scenes is the plot of the movie because uh, it's like it's just like okay, this reference, this reference, this reference, this reference, this reference, and that's the movie. Mm -hmm. yeah. Pretty much, yeah. It, but it, if you guys want to try to piece together the plot uh, for the viewers, uh, that might be a good idea to. Give them okay. some idea of what we're working with sure. here. Sure. So there's four orphans uh, that are 35 years old, and <laughs> <laughs> they receive uh, golden tickets uh, telling them that they've won a trip to Willy Wonka's factory. They go to Willy Wonka's factory. It turns out there's human remains in the candy. And they are so all. They, they are then brutally murdered one by <laughs> one, and yeah. I was hoping the movie would be over, <laughs> but it's not. You have to admit, like, the interior, the music – of the Willy Wonka stuff was funny. Kristen Glover's Willy Wonka. Come on, you guys Kristen have to. Glover. I least think. Okay, Crispin Glover. Yeah. Uh, he's name, right? guy okay. All right. But, uh, he was good. Respect. I thought he was a good Willy Wonka because he is so like naturally scary. Um, yeah. You know. And I wish he had more to do. I wish he wasn't just a pit stop on our way from the Willy Wonka parody to the Narnia parody. Crispin right. got his uh, check and he left. He's like, fuck this. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's paying for anything as normal as a mortgage. He strikes me as a guy who's paying off for his collection of human hands that he bought. Off. <laughs> you guys ever seen his clown music video? Please huh? no, no. Oh, where he's like in the '80s, he was like dressed as like a clown. He was like clown, clown, clown. That was like the entire lyrics. And uh, what the fuck? Yeah, well, interesting little guy. I gotta say. <laughs> But uh, little, interesting little guy. Yeah. <laughs> you, it is worth mentioning um, a, a surprisingly stacked cast for this dumb bad movie. Oh yeah, I mean yeah, they had you Kumar. Got, yeah, 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 you have Cal Penn, who's you know 
years away from working for the Obama administration. He was the <laughs> most I was disappointed in, Cal Penn. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> oh, did you guys know that um, Kevin Hart is in this movie as an uncredited role as uh, the guy in yes. whiteface? <laughs> yep. Wait, yeah. that was yeah. him? Yeah, so that yeah. was Kevin Hart. What? No way. Yeah, yeah, he took his name off of it. <laughs> I can. I, I wonder why. <laughs> uh, my favorite one was uh, Jama Mays as uh, the Anna Faris uh, impersonator, uh, mm. who is also known for her role in Paul Blart Mall Cop. It's a good, not <laughs> really? a bad movie. Not not good, but not bad. I it's can't. Not, I mean, can someone audience. other than Synth tell me if it's a good movie? <laughs> <laughs> what Paul Blart Mall Cop? Yeah, it's okay. If you really like movies like Nacho Libre, where it's just, hey, the main character is a fat fuck, then yeah, <laughs> you'll, you'll enjoy it. Because that's the entire like character arc of uh, Paul Blart. He's just, he's a fat fuck. With diabetes. Right. <laughs> with Yeah, with like low blood sugar, and he has to eat sugar, and then he like diehards them all. Well, actually, I've been doing a lot of like thinking about Paul Blart lately, and I think like it's like it, it's a movie that could have been much better if they uh, went all out. I feel like they, they they were a little too subtle with Paul Blart Mall Cop. It tries too hard <laughs> to be like a diehard, like straightforward a diehard parody. Like there should have been a scene at, at the food court. You make a mall movie, a mall comedy movie, and there's no food court scene. Kind of like wasted mm. potential. You can't yeah. drive a Segway through a food court. <laughs> yeah, you can. That's a restricted yeah. area. Says who? Yeah, it's a restricted area. Mall, mall rules, man. <laughs> you are the law. Yeah. yeah. I you just want to. You think he would break the law in his own mall? He is the law. Mm. I just want to <laughs> thank. Uh, I, I want to thank all the the mall officers out there for uh, protecting law and order in in this society. We just want to salute you and no jokes made against you. Yeah, sorry, to... Synth. I'm sorry, Synth. A cab includes mall cops. No, <laughs> no. Back the brown khaki and white t shirt. <laughs> Look, when I go into like the, the second half of Spencer's and I get like slightly uncomfortable, I will need a mall cop to like escort me out of there. This was a Spencer Gift style movie, I, I thought. Like they could have done <laughs> yeah. some kind of cross promotion. Exactly. One thing that I was, I think, most annoyed with about the movie. Um, yeah, it's just that, like, so, I mean, it's parody mostly of, like, Narnia, like, Pirates. Uh, what else was in here? Um, Harry Potter. Harry Potter, Da Vinci Code, X-Men. And, like, X-Men. Epic movies. What are these? That, that's, this is what, that's what Epic, like, Epic is. Um, They're just blockbusters. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, Da Vinci yeah. Code is Epic, I guess. The da Vinci Code references in this was just so lazy. It's like, like look, Tom Hanks, his hair like, is well, shitty. <laughs> I would have replaced Da Vinci Code with another blockbuster of the 2000s, maybe the Fast and Furious movies or they something. They reference that too. They reference Tokyo Drift with the uh, the sled. Okay, what what what's a 2000s movie they did not reference here that was a blockbuster? <laughs> I don't know because they probably got them all in that <laughs> in that one hour they had. I don't know. Did they reference Gladiator or 300? Well, mm. yeah, I guess 300 will 300 come came later. out later, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when they will do Meet the Spartans. Um, but mm-hmm. these guys are, I will say, they are auteurs, right? Like they have a distinctive <laughs> artistic style a- into all of their movies. And so I, I you know, like Wes Anderson, <laughs> they, are, they are an auteur. Yeah. Also, one of the two of them is a Nepo baby. I think we should stress that. We're like, yeah. not oh, the really? Canadian you don't one. Say. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> This definitely seems like the product of nepotism and uh, yeah. having uh, relatives in high places. Yeah. Can we uh, <laughs> like agree? Like, would you rather have nepo babies like start wars in Iraq or make epic in disaster movie? Like, come on! Like, there, there's worse things a nepo baby could do. But you know, maybe sometimes when I was watching this movie, I thought it might have been better if they went to Iraq instead. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> just just Imagine- a little. Meet the Iraqis. There were three jokes that made me smile for uh, about a half second. I will say that they had they had like three fun like at least they like Ben and I we did a Dane Cook episode and we kind of like broke down the jokes just to see if they fit the structure of a joke. And Dane Cook reminds me so much of this movie too, and just kind of <laughs> referencing things. But the uh, the when he's drinking the chocolate river, and Willy Wonka says that's actually a sewer line. I was like, at least there is the structure of a joke there, you know. So you think he's 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is what like we're not even at middle school humor. We're at like whatever comes before middle. But that right? is who's in, in the theater, right? Like th- that's I think who like I don't think there's a 35 year old man who's watching this movie like bravo, yes, very good, <laughs> good show. <laughs> they released an R rated, unrated cut. Like they assumed at least some people 18 and older were were picking up this at the at the blockbuster. Yeah, can we talk by the way for by, about the phenomenon of like the R rated version or sorry the X rated version or the sorry the unrated unrated. Yeah. unrated. Yeah. Yeah. Version of, of films and, and, in the, in the UK, like they called it the unseen version. Yes. Mm-hmm. But uh, did any of you guys see the unrated version of this specifically? No. There were no. boobs in the one I saw, so maybe there's. Uh, I know there's full frontal nudity in the uh, unrated version, like the part where the girl in the bikini comes out of um, the Narnia closet. I got really big <laughs> porn vibes from this movie. Uh, so maybe Wait. maybe it makes sense that there's an uh, like an X-rated version. Yeah, I mean, pre like like uh, in I mean, internet was around obviously, but like it, it accessing porn wasn't like as easy as it is now, and so I feel like there was there was money to be made in like offering you a taste of pornography <laughs> in a film in the two thousands, a, ta- a tasteful nipple, you know? yeah, and a, <laughs> right. a little bit of uh, the fetishy stuff, you know, like the weight gain scene. <laughs> oh God, Dude. what was up with that? Oh yeah. <laughs> They literally cast a different actress. Car- they didn't put Carmen Electra in a fat suit in that. No, suit. Carmen Electra different. would not get put in a fat suit. Uh, uh-uh, that's in her contract. You do not put me in a fat suit. <laughs> what does she look like, Eddie Murphy? Here's something that frustrated me about the movie: is um, so the X Men they like live in the real world of this movie, not the Narnia world, and then they show up in the Narnia world. I thought that was a major mm. continuity <laughs> issue. Oh, yeah. I think we're all really concerned about continuity in fucking that, that, movie. That, uh, made, uh, a, that, ma- that made your uh, rating go down a number that moment yeah. alone. <laughs> Half a star off. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, my big continuity problem was when the characters got killed multiple times. <laughs> I, yeah, I took what? issue with them being uh, all like brothers and sisters, actually, when they're all completely different races. Epic movie, more like woke movie. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Folks, the woke mind virus has come for our parody films. <laughs> is, nothing, is there nothing sacred? Oh my god, the this... villain was literally called White Bitch. <gasps> oh my gosh, yeah, you're right. What's going on, America? <laughs> they, um,. They did. They did speak out against WMDs in this movie, you know, and they also parodied like a non-movie in like Kanye West's "George Bush Doesn't Care About Black People." Yeah, they had to get um, that in video. Hurricane Katrina. Really well. Uh, I was thinking about like this movie in terms of like the two thousands with, uh, and I, because like now we have memes, right? So it's like Oppenheimer comes out, we get the Oppenheimer memes, right? A movie cut like spider you know some movie comes out we get the memes like immediately even before the movie comes out and that's like our way of referencing the movie and putting them in like transgressive situations where the characters can act sort of kooky but like pre social media and like memes this was the only way to see uh you know something stupid with our our cultural characters right so if mm-hmm. we wanted to see like a borat version of uh, the Narnia fawn, we had to do it in an $80 million movie instead of <laughs> on an, in like an Instagram post. You know? you know, that actually brings up a really good uh, thing that I kind of noticed about this movie. You know how like reaction images are all like very kind of, you know, topical and kind of like spacey looking where it's just like a character and a background and it's like very HD, just like ripe for putting text over, right? I feel like every frame of this movie is like that. Where just everything looks kind of uncanny in a certain way, where it's like, oh, this belongs on a T-shirt in like a, <laughs> like a frat party or something, with the, with the caption uh, "Sono Head" over it, you know, something like that. Yeah, uh, I'm surprised this, there wasn't a character in this movie wearing a Mountain Dew her shirt as as like product placement for Mountain Dew. I think there there could have been a good movie here. If you actually wanted to parody epic movies, I think there's a lot of fun that you can have making fun of how these movies like take themselves too seriously, for instance. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, have some fun with some historical anachronism. Like, I think of a great joke from Robin Hood Men in Tights, where you see five medieval knights in armor that are kicking Dave Chappelle on the ground. And he just <laughs> shouts, I hope someone's filming this, <laughs> which is <laughs> a great joke, right? Flawless. Yeah. Uh, but this movie is just 
so Family Guy pilled in just referencing things that you remember, you super special boy viewer, that it starts to do parodies of parodies, most egregiously with Borat, like we just said. But that stupid song where the pirates what of the Caribbean was oh. already a Lonely Island song called, because yeah. uh, it's the chronic what coals of Narnia or something of that nature. It's like... The Lonely Island are already a joke band. Don't make the joke song about the joke band. <laughs> it's too that much. It's, scene. A, it's, a, it's a human centipede of parody. They're already that, parodying rap videos, yeah. <laughs> that whole scene where they were like singing on the pirate ship, that that gave me like Terminal 7. That was just, <laughs> like, I was an inch away from death. If it, if it had gone on a second longer, I would have probably collapsed in my chair dead. Because it was just so much just psychic damage. It was like a really badly edited YouTube video. And I know, because I make lots of those. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> yeah? What do you mean? <laughs> okay, okay. The Borat parody was really lazy. I, I, did, I wouldn't say like, but I kind of like hummed my head during the pirate rap scene. <laughs> Don't facepalm. Um, I... I will say, uh, Ben, you said you're a big Snakes on a Plane fan, correct? I was. What I okay, was. In my youth. <laughs> Before this movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, Did so- you love it when he said, these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane five times in a row, just like the internet bloggers loved it? Oh, no, he said, not. these goddamn snakes on this goddamn oh, yeah, in, plane. In the PG-13 version, but in the mm-hmm. true version, the true uh, seltzer and uh, fried bean cut, you know, the unrated mm-hmm. cut, he does say, why, motherfucker. Why'd they make, mm-hmm. like, four versions of this movie? <laughs> <laughs> One is enough. It's like Oliver Stone, who keeps trying to fix Alexander. There are, like, four different cuts of his Alexander movie out there, and he just can't polish that turd. I, I think comparing this to Alexander is a bit of a leap. <laughs> <laughs> if if that is a turd that needs polish, this is a bucket of diarrhea that he, that has been dumped, and you're trying to like broom into a, the bucket again. Okay, angry video game. Number. But since sorry, you got you got interrupted. Right. You were you were building to a point with snakes. Oh oh yeah okay. Um, so I was saying so there's like a scene in epic movie where like the snakes like uh, attack a woman's breast and a man's uh, you know dick. Uh, was that actually in Snakes in a Plane, or was that yes, like yes. something? Okay. Yes, they just lifted another. It's just plagiarism. It's not parody. Like Snakes on a Plane is already highly, highly tongue in cheek, and you can tell from the fucking title. And yeah, there's like a scene where like a lady gets her boob bit. There's one like a guy gets his dick bit while he's pissing. Uh, and then this movie just did that, but worse. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I was sort of thinking that when it, it sort of made me respect this movie just a little less when they, they're kind of like stacking on jokes that were already jokes in like the original version. Like, I feel like yeah, you have to up the ante a little bit, at least like, I don't know, like snakes completely cover someone or I don't know, like, how, how would you parody? If I wanted to parody snakes on a plane. If I wanted to do that, first of all, I would not. It's a perfect film. Why would you ever touch it? But if I wanted to, the joke that you would do is you would pick a stupider animal to put on the plane. You'd put like penguins or something. I don't know. I'm spitballing. Happy bars on a plane. Yeah, yeah. You'd like make the animal different and dumber. Uh, And that would like, I think, be a more functional parody of that film. Yeah. And it would still be topical because like what was... um happy feet in the production at the time uh like oh we gotta make fun of the penguin craze or something Mm -hmm. march of the penguins came out around that time yeah if you added one more reference into the movie i think the movie would explode (laughs) (laughs) they meant they 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 reached their uh character limit it would hit critical mass yeah Yeah, you you could take out the borat parody i i feel like take the the borat parody (laughs) didn't even try that that was like because at least with the pirates or fucking Narnia, like I, I wouldn't say they're great, but at least like there were like some jokes. The Borat thing was like literally just saying something like in an accent, taking that character and putting him there and saying, "Ha ha!" He slaps his ass. Ha! I'm like, don't end your movie on that. Going back to what you were saying, Synth, and sorry to cut you guys off, but um, just th- what you were saying about how you didn't respect this movie very much for having so many like layered uh like things on top of each other. You did. You will say this. 
and yet you'll also defend for an hour Family Guy against me in a debate. We're not doing this this episode. We have Geth here. <laughs> We're going to be with actual look. We have two Family Guy haters in here. We can't get into it, you know? I, I like Family Guy, but uh, I it, usually there is a joke like, oh, this is worse than, oh, Lois, yeah, this is worse than the time. And like, there's some kind of comparison to reality. Like, like mm -hmm. a, a, there's a, a metaphor. Ben, you put it elegantly when we were speaking earlier that like, how did I you was, say it? I would say of the Simpsons rather than Family Guy, but there's there's an early Simpsons that does an elaborate parody of Raiders of the Lost Ark, particularly the scene where Indy takes the idol and then he runs out and the boulder comes behind him or whatever. And it's Bart stealing a giant jug of change from Homer. And as instead of the boulder, it's Homer who trips on the stairs and is rolling after him. So like big fat Homer is like rolling like the boulder. And then instead of, as in the actual scene, like these Amazonians yelling at the plane or whatever, uh, this is all very problematic as I describe it. <laughs> instead of those people like yelling at the plane as Indy goes away, it's Homer in his underwear in, in a suburban front yard, just screaming gibberish at Bart. So it's not just, hey, you remember Raiders, right? It's like, oh, how can we make this as like the scene in Raiders without changing one single thing about like the Simpsons universe and house that you know and love? So there's like an implicit comparison that happens there. Instead right. of just it, here is the thing. Yeah, there's like a comedic uh, like concept known as like mapping, where you take the details from something and you map it on to a different situation. And like the humor comes from how cleverly you've adapted it to the to the situation that you're in. Mm -hmm. I guess seen um, an episode of American Dad, uh, which I think is just like Family Guy, but like unironically good for mo for the most part. <laughs> and they had this elaborate uh, parody of uh, What's Eating Gilbert Grape. Are you guys familiar with that movie? Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, with um, squirrels uh, that like uh, moved into um, like Steve's uh, like treehouse or something like that, and. Uh, they uh, get around to like the burning down scene, you know, and they mm. map out all like the serious details of, you know, like Johnny Depp's monologue. And he's just like staring at the fire, just like completely cold face. Like, mm. like it even made my mom laugh. And my mom's a hardcore Seth MacFarlane hater. <laughs> She's like, oh, well, this is kind of funny. That, that's a weird thing to say. My mom is a hardcore Seth MacFarlane. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that, that's actually something that's like really uh like kind of apparent in this movie that you know people have, you know already said this before but like just the idea of that this entire movie is a thread of more like a, a patchwork or like a quilt of just references but it's not even a reference that references something they just lift that straight from other things almost like kind of stealing it's like a sample like in music it's like you're sampling it Hey, what if Samuel Jackson said his line a bunch of times? Well, there, yeah. there was a joke within that Samuel L. Jackson thing. Like, this isn't a debate. Well, <laughs> I do agree. I do agree with Synth there that there was a joke with Samuel L. Jackson, one of the worst impersonations I've ever seen. But he, he, she says, "Why do you keep saying that?" And he says, "Like, I don't know. People seem to like when I say this, which at least is like a commentary on the nature of the of yeah. the snakes on a plane film." Yeah. Okay. Yes, but. Look, my general point, though, is that, like, this movie, even though it does have some decent commentary, you know, that kind of can count as a joke sometimes if you're drunk, um, <laughs> you know, it uh, it just doesn't do it. Does, it's not clever with it at all. It's not even remotely clever with it. It's just uh, it's just lame and lazy and crappy. You know, if like when we're comparing it to American Dad or, or, or like The Simpsons, where they actually like take the reference material, but they kind of spin it in their own way. I would rather see that in a movie, uh, which I think a movie that does that really well is like Austin Powers. There's a lot of jokes in there that are like referential where they do it in their own fashion without just saying, Hey, Hey, uh, Hey guys, look at this thing. Look at this thing. See that right there. That's what we're doing. <laughs> you know, it's, it's very annoying. I know in a disaster yeah. movie, uh, the main joke that I remember from that movie when I watched it when I was like 10 um, was uh, the head on applied directly to the forehead head on applied directly to the forehead. And that's just mm -hmm. the joke right there. They're just recreating the commercial, that's, but with, the joke is the commercial that you saw on TV once. Yeah. And, but it's, it's the princess from enchanted and you know, every now and then they're saying, <laughs> fuck you bitch to her, you know, it's crude. So that means it's funny. 
this like repetition, right? Like again, to use the Family Guy comparison, like uh, what are some classic Family Guy? Rep- <sighs> yeah, mom, mom, mommy, <sighs> <there's>, <sighs> ah, or whatever. And I, I don't know, I don't know why, I don't know how, but that ah hits for me or did when I was a child way more than something like an epic movie where they have the like oh, the, the the one character who just yeah. repeats what the other woman says the entire time this is a movie that unironically has like a dumb blonde character like it's like but she's not blonde she's a redhead but it's like yeah like a ditzy character who just repeats what another character says from the first scene that they're together to the last one if, if i can ask a question to the group so uh parody movies seem to be a booming industry in the 2000s you know you got uh the, the seltzer beans guys you got uh my big fat independent movie the 40 year old virgin who knocked up sarah marshall you got the scary movie franchise even disney made cloudy with a chance of meatballs which i believe was sort of a parody of <clears throat> disaster movies and these uh this these movies like worked in a very brief window right like in the 2000s because because these guys kept making movies in the 2010s but nobody saw them like they were all box office bombs like thank god and so, like, I'm wondering, like, what culturally did change after 2010 that people just, like, weren't interested in seeing some, like, this awful garbage anymore? Donald well, Trump became president. <laughs> You're guys. welcome. This is my unfettered opinion right here. Mm-hmm. I think the main difference mm-hmm. between the, like, crappy shit movie spoofs that we saw in the 2000s up to nowadays when they started to, like, kind of fizzle out in their mid-2010s, I think it was the loss in prominence of nascar and the fact that we were no longer in in a war i think people became less violent and less stupid and they started just becoming a bit more civilized so you're saying yeah that that like if we're no longer at war you know like we don't have to be so uh baby brained and that we our culture could think again you know yes yeah by the time it had reached 10 years since 9-11, the American brain has healed partially. <laughs> they had healed from the crane, yeah. from the plane crashing into it. Yeah. They elected <laughs> Donald Trump. You can't say they healed. Okay. Epic president. <laughs> I, I, I have a theory, which is just that um, there started to be like a... Uh, or like, it's not my theory, but like a beer and wine track of culture. This is something we said on one of our shows where like over the course of the 2000s, you have like a whole bunch of Sopranos, Mad Men, uh, fucking The Wire is a 2000s show. All of the big prestige dramas, I think that starts to seep into the culture a little bit. And there's this idea that I'm going to be a discerning Mm. consumer of content for some people. You can see how this absolutely wrecks the sitcom right where like the network sitcoms are big bong theory and waitress yeah. and mom and these shows that i've seen posters for <laughs> yeah. but have never met a human who has watched and then the quote-unquote good sitcoms are the ones that are like oh it's the funniest thing you'll ever see and you won't laugh <laughs> once because it's a dramedy that's about trauma or whatever right like Everyone keeps telling me to watch The Bear. I watched two episodes and it gave me anxiety. I got stressed watching it. It's good. I like it. But yes, yeah. Have you ever watched Shameless? It tries too hard. It's uh, yeah, because that'll definitely give you like anxiety. Because like at so- at one point they're just like making goofy jokes, and then the next part like teen pregnancy. Yeah, it, I mean it's like kind of comforting in a weird way when you're like when you grow up like desperately poor, seeing like shows about desperately poor people. And you're just like, oh, hey, they're just like me. I'm not a total fucking outcast. And, you know, you look at stuff like that, like Shameless, which is like kind of the more like, you know, semi-serious kind of darker aspect of it. Then you see the kind of lighter side of it, which is like it's always sunny in Philadelphia or like Trailer Park Boys or something Mm, like that. And it's just you you see kind of both of those worlds where most like, you know, most people back in that time in like the early or like early to mid 2000s would be watching shit like, uh, I don't know, fucking like keeping up with the Kardashians or some bullshit yeah. where it's or like just... a reality show where people have to like eat like Buffalo shit for like a thousand dollars. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's, that's the genre that goes back like even to the fifties, I think like even with like the Beverly Hillbillies of being like, look at these people who are even more uncouth than me. 
um, you know, ruined uh, the rich people neighborhood. Honey, honey Boo Boo Child. That was a 2000s thing, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, anything on HGTV for that Look matter. at these people. They're literally eating roadkill. They, like, mastered roadkill cuisine. My Strange Addiction, uh, Intervention, all Orders. Yeah. Orders. Yeah. I, my personal theory for why these movies don't get made anymore is just because, like, we don't make comedy movies anymore. That's not, like, a genre that exists. Yeah. And for some reason, we aren't interested in seeing it mm -hmm. in theaters. And, uh, like, most comedies now, like, just have to get dressed up a little bit, like, as an action comedy or a dramedy. And, like, there's, there's, no, there's no other genre you can dress this up in, right? You can't be like, yeah. eh, this is a dramedy, right? Yeah. And, like, I, they're not... <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. this is this is that straight pure comedy shit, right? Like we are never going to well, get uh, another Step Brothers, and that makes me so sad. Yeah. <laughs> if they made Step Brothers today, it would have to be a political satire somehow. <laughs> but like when we were talking about how um you know, those kind of like uh mm. Trailer Park Boys and Shameless and all that would uh you know, give us like uh that kind of like comfort of like, you know, this kind of reminds me of me and my life a little bit. I think you can kind of derive a little comfort from, you know, these kind of like shitty, like epic movie, like kind of parodies, because it reminds you of like the fart jokes that you make with your friends, you know? I can kind of see that. And, and kind of looking at it from that perspective does kind of redeem it a little bit, because it's just like, you know, if you if you look at it as a gigantic waste of money and as a gigantic just playground fart fest, whatever, who cares, bullshit show, mm. then like, yeah, I mean. That makes sense. It's it can be someone's comfort movie. I'm yeah. sure that epic movie is somebody's favorite film. Oh, a yeah. true piece of cinema sitting high on the shelf of somebody <laughs> out there. But yeah, my cousin. <laughs> I talked to my cousin yesterday who loves this movie, and he's now like 25. And like, because he, ha I don't think he's able to discern between like a good joke and a bad joke. And like you said, Mads, like a joke comes every four seconds in this movie. Like the jokes per minute are off the charts and like they're all bad, but there are a lot of them. And like the story's pacing, the story is paced like a dream in that you just keep <laughs> going from like one random sequence to the next and so you don't really have like time to rest and if you so you if you can't discern between like a bad joke and a good joke and you can't discern between like a good plot and a bad joke then like this is your favorite movie because it has the most jokes and it has the most like plot changes because mm -hmm. it just keeps moving yeah um and and there is a joke every four seconds i think everybody has like their own like kind of like epic movie that like you know, for some reason, you know, they just can't help but like it. You know, like mine is a uh, little Nicky, <laughs> the Adam Sandler movie. <laughs> okay, mine, mine is Gamer from two thousand nine. Mm. You bring that this movie up that, every episode. It's like an action mm -hmm. horror movie. It's like an action movie, and it's supposed to be like a psychological thriller, but it's just it, the the the. It's also kind of a spoof. No, no, it's serious. It's <laughs> it's serious, it, but it, it's like a dystopia uh, movie. But it's like uh, every like shot is just like hard cut, snap, snapshot, snap, 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 snap. You know, just that type of crap. And it, yeah. it uh, it's nauseating. And I tried to make my friends watch it, and they were like, <laughs> "Holy fucking shit! Turn this <laughs> off! I'm getting sick." Like me and like five of my friends, we all sat down and watched this movie. And they were just like, please, for the love of God, turn it off. This is the worst fucking, like, I'm getting sick watching this. And it's just all like, you know, gritty action, you know, action scene, action scene, whatever. But it's just every cut is like a different angle than the same scene. So you just get like sick by the first five minutes of the movie. I was actually uh, taking a, 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 sh a shower earlier today thinking about epic movie and I, I had this weird thought, and I know it's, like, total bullshit, <laughs> dog shit, but, like, I had this theory that, like, what if, like, the liberal critics, like, hating these spoof movies really distanced themselves from, like, the mainstream, like, audience and anti-intellectual public that they – it kind of created Donald Trump – as a figure it's a it's oh a really God. dumb theory but i i thought about it i i really thought like <laughs> about the discourse over these movies has sort of brought that sort of elitist versus 
public sort of, uh, you know, mentality. Yeah. Do you think Donald Trump would like this movie? Yes. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Donald Trump is a cinephile. He he tweeted, they don't they just don't make him like Sunset Boulevard anymore. Okay. And Donald Trump is a criterion collection guy. He gets he sits down in the White House with a table full of cheeseburgers and he throws on the nineteen twenties German silent Nosferatu. I just know it. He did study film at uh Yeah. He took a film class, and uh, I know that he oh, has yeah? seen uh, the what is it, uh, Les Misérables or The Hunchback of Notre Dame like a million times. He loves the play. The, what the original the French one? Yeah, the Andrew Lloyd oh, Webber right. one. I can't remember. I don't know anything about plays, but I know that he's a huge <laughs> fan. He's seen it a bunch of times. He could have been a movie maker. Yeah. What the hell's he doing? Like trying to get into the White House? Oh yeah, he's a huge Broadway guy. That's where. I guess he just stumbled there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, listen, he's given us yep. epic president. Us, oh, you know. there we got a we damn go. parody of in the White House. See, that's that's how we can bring these movies back. We need like a shitty lib SNL sketch <sighs> that's called Epic President, and we're gonna get Alec Baldwin to do his fake non impression, and it's gonna be like this. But I think SNL president. needs to go off the air for a long time. I, I mean, I do want him to do fifty seasons, just because he's so. I think they're at forty nine now, and like. I always got to support a uh, Canadian in um, oh, Lauren name? Michaels. Fucking... Alan, Alan Dershowitz? <laughs> no, Lauren Michaels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, do you ever <laughs> Lauren... have like uh, your dad like tell you like old Saturday Night Live is like the funniest thing ever and then he shows you like B Hospital or like Hotel Samurai and you're like, dad, are you fucking stupid? <laughs> like... <laughs> I feel like yeah. Hotel Samurai might have legs. <laughs> that, that sounds like a funny premise. <laughs> I mean, the Lonely I, Island era was pretty good. Yeah. I think SNL uh, these days suffers pretty greatly from a lack yeah. of inspiration. It just all mm-hmm. seems very like, oh, I saw this on the internet. I laughed yeah. at their uh, I mean, Try Guys parody skit. So, like, Can I just ask everybody, what was your favorite joke in the movie? Like, What joke made you sort of laugh or crack a smile? I'm a sucker for slapstick. The part where the guy just pulled a gun on the on the dude and just shot him in the chest. Mm-hmm. Like that first two seconds of that was like hilarious. But when they just kept dragging it out where it's just like Yeah. Yeah, like when yeah, that was my favorite joke too. But like then they continue to drag it out and it's like yeah. what I said earlier, like when they do have like a good joke, then they ruin it. They can't right. not point to their own joke. Yeah. yeah. Right. They have to have like another <laughs> character be in the background and be like, ha <laughs> see that? Like my favorite, the joke that I almost laughed at, it was like very like almost a Mel Brooks thing where right after Kumar meets the white bitch, he says, oh, I'm going to take you to my white castle. And they hard cut to a white castle. And if they just left it there, it would (laughs) have been fine. But they couldn't do it. He had to say, oh, haven't I already done this? A good visual gag with some dumb wordplay that's like very Mel Brooksian, but they just... They can't help them. It reminds me of Bojack Horseman doing stand up, being like, Do you get it? Because why the long face? Because I'm a horse. Do you get it? Or whatever. Like it's it's like that, but genuine in earnest. It's like they feel the need in the joke to explain the joke. Mm-hmm. I will say, um, you guys say that this movie just focuses on a bunch of like references and that's all. I will say my favorite joke has to be you're gonna you guys are gonna like shit on me. Um, it's going to be the uh, Ashton Kutcher like punked joke because he's so exaggerated. They they took him from like like from a ten to a hundred. They really exaggerated it. That I I had a stupid chuckle on my face during that. I mean, I, I had a stupid chuckle during uh, the uh, MTV Cribs uh, parody. Oh, yeah, I was angry. <laughs> it was <laughs> mad. The I first was like- bit. When they first start uh, parodying the format of Cribs, I thought that that was a serviceable joke. It it had the structure of a joke. Mm-hmm. It is unfortunate that they turned it into like a, a, they really dragged that out for like it three just minutes. Kept going, <laughs> where he's like, "Oh, I you have to have as many flat screens as possible." So I put them under the cushions when I'm looking for change, and I'm like, "But this." You, you had it for a second, and you just had to keep smelling your own farts, didn't you? Can't you see that was like a, like an elevation of a joke, though, where it goes from like kind of like conventional places like under the couch into like a toilet in a woman's head? It's juvenile, no. but like 
it's at least like it elevates a bit. Yeah. Too too many. Too too, too many. many. I could many. I could have tolerated like even like the I piss on my flat screen. <laughs> and that's the that is the ceiling on that joke. <laughs> Jokes work best in threes if they did like under my couch cushions, in the in my bedroom, in the bathroom. They could have ended it there. Okay. Bam. Yeah. Whole joke done. Easy. Stamp of approval. That's a joke. You made one <laughs> joke. <laughs> You know, that's all they should have done. When they make Epic Movie 2, we'll get you to direct it. (laughs) I bet I do a better fucking job. (laughs) I, and Uh, yeah, with the Ashton Kutcher punk scene, he kept saying this fake word, schwow. And that's just like a funny phoneme that, again, I didn't laugh once in this movie, but I, the corners of my lips raised a little bit hearing him say schwow over and over again. My favorite thing in this movie really just is the slapstick humor. None of mm-hmm. the like setup jokes really appealed that much to me because they just dragged them on forever. But there was like that one scene where they were in the prison of the White Castle, uh, where like Jack's Jack Swallows stabbed Kumar in the in the chest and then took his whole body and slammed him against the guard. <laughs> I thought that was funny. That was like a little funny slapstick moment. And it's and like, it yeah, it's very clearly a dummy, too. So they're being a little like. Yeah. It felt kind of Mel Brooksian, where it's just like, yeah, this is yeah. something mm-hmm. stupid, where, yeah. you know, it felt nice. I kind of laughed. Um, when was it? Uh, oh, uh, the Harry Potter character, like, put on, like, the fake yes. invisible cloak, and he went to go uh, try and ogle at the black girl's tits. And then they cut away to a body double of, like, an obvious, like, blonde chick. They did a lot of funny stuff with body doubles in this. Like, the, the whole, like, fight scene between yeah. the. Uh, the king guy, they just replaced him with, like, an Asian martial artist. Like, the gags in these movies are fine, but the jokes are awful. It, it reminded me of, like, if you took a group of middle schoolers and showed them some Mel Brooks movies, and then you gave them $20 million and said, do your best, this is what you would get. <laughs> Pretty much. So, uh, what are you guys' like, kind of final thoughts on uh, this, this wonderful movie? Well, uh, I actually, I prompted... Um, uh, like a chat GPT three, like program into writing me a parody film. And I was shocked that like it, it like, cause normally like uh, AI programs are horrible at making comedy. They just like, don't understand what to do, but because this is such a, like a simple formula, which is like do meta commentary and then make reference to something that like the, the script that it wrote me was shockingly similar to uh, the quality of this movie. Cause like, all you have to do is like, acknowledge that your character's in a story and then like introduce a random event that like of, of like a, um, a transgressive figure. And so it, it is actually like, these might be the only people that have to worry about AI taking their jobs is the, uh, the <laughs> seltzer bean brothers or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. My closing thought is just, I am never going to watch another one of these, but, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, but no, I, I mean, joking aside, like, I'm not sad that we don't get movies like this anymore, but I am sad that we don't get straight comedies anymore. And so yeah. that's... Uh, that is regrettable. Yeah. What this, about you, Synth? What, sorry? No, no I was going to say, this, the price to pay was that we don't have these anymore. I guess you could flip it into a silver lining. We may not get comedies anymore, but at least we don't get the the, the movie cinematic universe movies. Yeah. Well, YouTubers, uh, another thing, I think the reason why we these movies stopped getting made in the late 2000s and the like early 2010s is that YouTube became a thing. YouTube has kind of monetized the uh, comedy sphere, hasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because uh, you can't really find uh, comedy movies or comedy shows anymore. Like Ben was saying, like, you know, just it's all on YouTube. You can just find it for free on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so maybe that was the nail in the coffin. You guys have convinced me. I learned an important after school special here. Epic movie <laughs> is not an epic movie, but I I just can't hate it because like I I know this was like a rushed thing. They 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 really rushed the production on this to get all the references in time, and there is like this weird because like I saw vampires sucked in theaters. And I remember, like, everyone, people in their early 20s, people in their late teens, people in middle school like me, just laughing like morons during that movie. And there's there was something magical about that, like the human spirit, like yeah. a bunch of cavemen around the fire just laughing at <laughs> someone getting their head bashed in with a stick. There, there, it's just yeah. that instinct idiot response in me. 
And I, I, I do kind of miss these movies. I, I feel like, okay, it, it doesn't have to be directed by these two fucking Nepo babies or whatever. But I feel like in the 2020s, we should get like one major big budget spoof movie. I'll compromise with you. It's like, we don't have to make any more of those movies, but it sounds like what you want is for us to all watch TikToks together. Yeah. Where we get in a movie theater <laughs> and we watch TikTok parodies in a in a room and we can compromise and I would agree to that. That sounds I mean, tolerable. More to- <laughs> Look, I, I'm, I'm going to agree with Synth here. I think that we should have a spoof movie renaissance that doesn't take from the 2000s, but rather the 80s style spoof movies. Something mm. that actually has structure. And release mm-hmm. one. That's yeah. the whole renaissance. Just one. One that's good. I wish there would be a Drawn Together revival. I think we need Drawn Together again. I that's, I like... That's a deep cut. I kind nice. of like that show. <laughs> mm. See, I don't I don't want to be like a, like a woke mind virus snowflake here, but Drawn Together is like... I just remember it being a little bit too edgelordy for me sometimes. I, that's like, why it's good. Even, that's what makes it good. <laughs> I don't want to go too long in this because I feel like this is like a topic on itself, but I feel like a lot of like 2000s had like left wing edge, if that makes sense, where you kind of like mm-hmm. use like mm-hmm. uh, political incorrectness to sort of land a joke. For example, there was a joke of like the stupid, like there'll be like the stupid character says something bigoted and the whole point. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like that's like Frank and always sunny. Yeah, yeah, no, I think that like, like, and yeah, it's a different time and place. Like we've talked on our show about uh, like the new atheism movement, right. Where there was this idea that like being as offensive to traditional people as possible, as possible was okay. Cause you were doing it for the right reasons, right. For fighting bigotry and, and irrationality, whatever, 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 whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, all of those guys have become big anti-woke guys now, right? Like they're not, they're, they've, they've all gone off the rails and become right-wing grifters. But mm-hmm. no, nah, it's just, I, I feel like for, for drawn together, like even, even with that in mind, like you're being offensive, but you're doing it for good reasons. Like I just remember jokes about like self-harm where like at the time I was yeah. like, I'm not so sure, man. I'm not so sure we should be joking about this. Going back to uh, going back to what Synth said about like kind of having like left wing edge and and like those older cartoons, I, I think nowadays uh, when we think of edginess, it's been too cursed and too kind of poisoned by the uh, 2014 to 2017 era of just like everything edgy just being racism, you know, mm-hmm. or just like being like a right wing thing from like 4chan or whatever. Uh, you know, I, I think we could bring back some semblance of left wing edge and, you know, be edgy and be crass and, you know, say, you know, crude things mm-hmm. while having an overall message that's kind of pro kind of, you know, you know, not antisocial, not, you know, mm-hmm. you know, like that, you know, and I think uh, yeah, I think yeah, we're really missing that nowadays. People yeah. crave the edginess. People crave the, uh, the pushing wit. the boundary. The yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they, they, they crave that. And I think that's why we like kind of idolize these old cartoons from the 2000s, because that was all pretty much like Bush era protest art. <laughs> and nowadays <laughs> it's like nowadays we crave that because edginess has been taken over by the cottage industry of conservative grifting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's a push for like everything to become rigidly wholesome. Like, you know, which I hate that, too. That yeah. is so annoying. <laughs> yeah. You guys like Ted Lasso? I love Ted Lasso. It's my favorite show. It's so wholesome. <laughs> Listen, man, we were all in lockdown. Okay, we needed we needed the hug of a television show. Okay, yeah. we're all in lockdown. We all realize that we're all non-binary underneath it all. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I just want to get one last factoid in before we before we wrap up for real. These two guys. Mm-hmm. Jason Friedberg and Aaron Seltzer. Let's get their names right one time so people can look mm-hmm. them up. Uh, right. If you pull up their filmography on Wikipedia, it has all of their Rotten Tomato ratings. Um, <laughs> this movie that we got pulled a 7%, sorry, no, 2%. It is not their <laughs> lowest score. If you <laughs> exclude Scary Movie, which they weren't actually a part of, they just got their names attached to it because their horror parody got killed by the studio. These guys have made one, two, three, four, five, six. These guys have made like ten movies and have never scored higher than an eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Just shows you how out of touch the critics are, you know? <laughs> yeah, those coastal elite critics. I know on IMDB, like their movies are like among like the lowest in like the percentile. I mean, shit. If uh, if Jackass Four 
could prove that like people go to the movies to just laugh at something like insanely stupid and shit posty. Uh-huh. The jackass guys are doing it for real. They're like yeah. actually putting their bodies on the line. <laughs> yeah. They're actually yeah. having gay sex with each other. <laughs> yeah. That's their <laughs> cock and balls getting crushed with by the cock and ball crusher. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, so yeah that, ben and a- I have a jackass episode of our pod and like they have an ideology to that show it is like they are clowns you know they mm-hmm. are and and they are uh, nihilistic and mm-hmm. like they they have a a world view that is very like sincere and i think that like mm-hmm. jackass is overall like a very good series yeah, uh, yeah I think that's that's would you light yourself yeah. on fire for fifteen hundred dollars Uh, i'm really into john waters and the dreamlanders and all those movies and like i guess they were like the original jackasses because it's like no no he's really eating shit they they sat around and waited for eight hours for that dog to take a shit and he picked it up and he smiled at the camera like yeah and actually ate it and i actually almost gagged a little bit are you saying we could have like a steve-o like a24 like career (laughs) going on yeah Yeah. we need a hereditary starring steve-o (laughs) <laughs> but yeah let's probably wrap it up here we're, we're getting a little long in the tooth on the timing here yeah uh, jersey yeah. mics is going to close in a while i gotta get going <laughs> <laughs> so yeah uh th- thank you guys for coming on to our podcast uh ben giordano do you have anything to say before we kind well, of wrap thank, up here thank you for having us first off <laughs> i begin my prepared remarks by saying <laughs> uh i learned a whole bunch of new zoomer things by coming on here <laughs> I was yeah. opening new tabs and looking things up as we went along. So thank you. <laughs> but no, um, jokes aside, thank you so much for, for having us on. If you're listening, uh, subscribe to this pod, the Zoomer Tombstone podcast, and subscribe to our pod, Remember Shuffle. All right. Yeah. And I thought can... that this was a great way to, uh, to to bridge the generational divide, you know. Yeah. Have, uh, Where the have healing fun. can truly begin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to look at a piece of art that was on the border of, of these two generations. <laughs> yeah. I'm, we, we did a little uh you know pre-game uh talk here to make sure we didn't like say any too much uh, like zoomer slang like dead ass <laughs> or uh, you know fire lit or whatever all the kids uh, are saying nowadays oh, this, so. this, this character really had the riz <laughs> yeah <laughs> no oh, one yeah. in this movie had riz <laughs> no they didn't know when stifler's mom was on the screen all i could say was god damn <laughs> oh. A wooga. <laughs> All right. But yeah, that's uh, that's been this episode. Please uh, feel free to go and visit the Remember Shuffle podcast. You can find them uh, where? YouTube, Twitter, where else? Yeah, where? Apple Podcasts, Spotify, any, every podcast. Where we get your podcast. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. All right. And uh, you can find our podcast, any free viewers. Uh, if you want to find more episodes, go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash Zoomer Tombstone. You'll be able to find all of our or half of our episodes that we do not release to the public. Uh, that's paywall because we we hate all of you. Um, but yeah, I think that'll wrap it up for this one. Uh, thank you guys for coming onto our show, and we yeah have a great day. I guess I don't know what to say. <laughs> Please stop burping into my headphones. Soon. <laughs> I beg you. All right, the Jersey Mike's au revoir.